folks, this is the House Corrections and Institutions Committee, and we are meeting today to bring up S24. We're looking at language changes that are being proposed and that it was voted out of Senate Judiciary Committee this morning. Um, and it does vary quite a bit in some places, particularly in the findings. The findings is where the real difference is. And the other big difference is that when DOC uh, submits a plan, that DOC would need to uh, submit the plan for approval to the executive director of the racial equity um, before it is presented to the legislature. That is the largest changes, those two. There are a few pieces of our, but our bill beyond our findings were taken out completely. Um, and there was one part of the, um, one part of the intent language on our bill was taken out, as was a small piece on the um, plan. And I, but the big, the big difference are the findings for that. So, I'm going to turn this over to Becky to quickly walk us through um, the what the Senate has done. And our work today is to see if we can find a path forward to this and possibly um, agree to what the Senate has done or modify some of this. Um, and send it back before it comes up on the floor in the Senate tomorrow. Does that make sense to committee members, the process? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Becky. Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, so this is a, a further proposal of amendment from um, the, the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, the, Main differences here, um, as was mentioned, is um, the findings have all changed to uh, be more of an acknowledgement of the role of the executive director of racial equity. And then in the um, actual plan part of the bill, um, this is something that the commissioner of corrections would submit to um, the executive director uh, of racial equity for approval, and then um, that approved plan would be um, reported to the legislature. Uh, but I'll walk through uh, each piece of this. Mm -hmm. So um, subsection A is the findings. Um, the first finding is um, that in recognition of the moral imperative to identify um, and combat systemic racial disparities, the General Assembly passed Act 9 in 2018 which created the position of the executive director of racial equity with the uh, purpose of uh, to identify and work to eradicate systemic racism within state government. Um, that in order to implement a program of continuing coordination and improvement of activities in state government in order to combat systemic racial disparities and measure progress toward fair and impartial governance, the executive director is charged in statute with the following. And this is all um, quoted um, from statute. So first is overseeing a comprehensive organizational review to identify systemic racism in each of the three branches of state government and inventory systems in place that engender racial disparities. Um, second is managing and overseeing the statewide collection of race-based data to determine the nature and scope of racial discrimination within all systems of state government. And then uh, finally is developing a model uh, fairness and diversity policy and reviewing and making recommendations regarding the fairness and diversity policies held by all state government systems. The third finding is that the executive director of racial equity is also responsible in statute for working collaboratively with state agencies and departments to gather relevant existing data and records necessary to carry out the purpose of the chapter and to develop best practices for remediating systemic racial disparities throughout state government. Uh, the fourth finding um, says that in light of 
the historical racial disparities in the criminal justice system. The General Assembly finds systemic racism and bias at the Department of Corrections should be prioritized for review by the Executive Director of Racial Equity. Um, so that those are all new findings in, in comparison to the version as uh, passed out of your committee. So Becky, do you want to take questions on this now as we go along? Would that work? Yeah, that works. Okay. So none of our findings were put put in. Um, and I think some of our findings are pretty important. And I don't know if we want to let go of our findings or modify any of these in front of us. But I think one of the most important parts of our finding is that DOC is a department within the Agency of Human Services. And that the role, important role of DOC is to implement the quality of an individual's sentence and the ability to return successfully. Um, and that the department's role is to provide security and ensure racial and social equity to employees and to persons of, under the custody of the commissioner. We lost all of that. Alice, did they have a reason why that was all taken out? They were feeling that we're giving, oh, they were really feeling that the bill gives a priority for the racial equity folks to look at DOC above everybody else. Is that about right, Butch? Yeah, that's uh, pretty accurate, Alice. But they say they're going to pro pro uh, prioritize it. The racial equity. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was also concerned about how do you turn the system um, around. That was also another concern. And um, now this was created in 2018. This executive branch, the, ex the executive Correct. director of racial equity. Yes. And two years later, they're deciding they should look into corrections. There is only one person, and it's Susanna Davis. She's the executive director. There's only one person who's, who is doing all of this work throughout all of state government. So it's a real heavy lift for any individual. Yeah. Does the committee want to have Becky continue and then that might put the findings more in context? Okay, why don't we do that then? Um, so subsection B is the intent section um, and there the, I believe the first two um, are the same as the house version. So it's to address systemic racism and bias to achieve racial and social equity for employees of the Department of Corrections and persons under the custody of the commissioner. And um, the second is to recruit, train, and retain a diverse and high quality workforce in the department. Um, I, I'm sharing my screen. I, I don't have access to the other version, but I believe the difference was um, a third one about the, a human services approach. Mm -hmm. um, and that was taken out. Yeah. Our third part was an enhanced human services approach to the state correctional program that would require DOC to undertake a thorough review and revision of its policies, administrative directives, and interim procedures and memos. That's how you get into the system changes of DOC, which was a concern of some members of Senate Judiciary, but how you get into DOC systems to really change how they provide services this is the crux of how you do it. And this language was eliminated. So I would like to get that language back. Because I think it's really important. Okay, why don't you go into the plan, Becky? So, um, top of page three, subsection C. Um, the Commissioner of Corrections shall submit for approval to the Executive Director of Racial Equity 
a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism and bias and promote diversity and inclusion in the Department of Corrections. Um, so the two changes here are that um, the, the strategy and plan is being um, given to the Executive Director of Racial Equity for approval. Um, and then in the actual substance of what they're addressing, it was changed from address systemic racism, bias, um, and diversity and inclusion to address systemic racism and bias and promote diversity and inclusion. Where is that piece again, Becky? I'm sorry. The promote um, was added in um, for the diversity and inclusion piece, and that is on line three, page three. Oh, all right. That's right. And promote diversity. Yeah. Okay. I don't have it in my printed copy. Um, uh, then I believe, I don't believe there are changes to the, what would be in the plan. Um, so the scope of the plan is still addressing the department's employment practices and supervision of persons under the custody of the commissioner, both in state facilities and in the community. Um, sub, subdivision two is the timeline and process, and that's still looking at hiring practices, training, supervision, professional development, and competency standards to inform the basis of performance evaluation and promotion of employees. Um, it would still be looking at identifying the resources and funding needed, if any, to complete the plan, and then the um, identifying the list of stakeholders. So one difference there is in B, they put in the word, if any, um, and they also took out what we had, including upgraded technology, consultant support, and required data. They took that language out. As we know, there's going to need to be technology improvements. For one thing. So that's a change. Okay. We can and then subsection D is the report. So um, the change here is that by December 15th, the Commissioner of Corrections is submitting the draft plan to the Executive Director of Racial Equity for review and approval. And then after approval, that plan would be um, given to uh, this committee and the Senate Judiciary Committee, but not later than January 15th of next year. Okay. Well, that's a lot to swallow in a short period of time, but I think Becky walked us through it pretty succinctly. Um, Alice, mm -hmm. can I say something to the, that I'd like to say to the committee members? Sure. So remembering folks, uh, as I sat in with Alice this morning at judici in judiciary, I think the basic decision here is, is how much of this can we swallow? And if, if, if you bought into the bill, uh, how, how much of these changes can we swallow? We want to make changes that will not upset the apple cart, and the apple cart's on one wheel right now. Uh, so, uh, as we go back through this, kind of, kind of remember that uh, we're going to have to give up something to get something. And uh, why well, is theirs on one wheel, and ours is on two solid ground? Well, they're, 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 they're absolutely not going to approve our, our bill. Our right. Bill. Uh, so. If, if they don't approve the bill or if they send their version back to us the way that it is, chances are the bill will die. It's and, dead. Uh, yeah, absolutely dead. So we have to come to some sort of a, a compromise somewhere along the way. Not, we don't wanna roll over, but we wanna make, we wanna make compromises that they can swallow. Uh, so I, I, Allison, then I just wanna let the committee talk as I, I was, not I, doing well when I left the meeting this morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we do have the commissioner on with us too and the executive director. So I'd like to kind of open this up for them as well if they want to weigh in. Um, I'll start with you, Commissioner Baker, if you want to weigh in at all. Well, let me do this. I, I believe, and I don't know this for sure because I haven't talked to the director, 
<clears throat> but Heather Simons told me that the director may have to leave by one. So okay. out of respect right. to her, I, I, yep. I, you know, I'd like to have her to have some time to weigh in and, and then uh, my time's a little more flexible. Okay, good, thank you. So we'll shift, uh, Susanna Davis, the executive director of the Racial Equity. Welcome, you've been bouncing back and forth all morning. <laughs> Thank Welcome. you, and thank you, and thank you, Commissioner, as well. Um, yes, I suppose first I just want to complete the answer to an earlier question um, by flagging for the committee that the role of Executive Director of Racial Equity was created in 2018. However, it did take more than a year to appoint the person. I began working in this role the first week of August of last year, so it's been a year, and of course, the last what nine months now have been marked by most of our agencies needing to um, put a lot of our existing work on the back burner in order to do direct pandemic response. So I do just want to flag that, um, of course, we're not using COVID as any sort of excuse not to do racial equity work. Equity is a foundational principle of everything we do. It should be. However, I do want to stress that um, the last year of the state's racial equity work through this role is not reflective of the pace that the work would normally go were it not for those intervening circumstances. Um, and of course, you know, there have been discussions about um, the roles and responsibilities and resources of the office as well that I think would, would lend themselves to helping us get this work done a little faster. Um, second, I suppose just generally speaking about the language and, and to the question, I think everyone has, has acknowledged at this point that this work is already part of the mandate in Act 9 that created uh, my role. And so, you know, I hope everyone is, is comfortable knowing that this work is going to happen regardless. DOC has already stated its, its commitment to doing this work. Um, and of course, I'm legally mandated to do it. So at this point, I think we're we're having a conversation largely about uh, what are the values that we wanna espouse in this bill, particularly through the findings and the intent language. Uh, I, of course, leave that up, up to you. It is your role to make that determination, but in terms of the substantive work that's happening at the core level, I do just wanna make sure everyone's aware it is gonna happen either way. What this does is gives us a deadline specifically for DOC, um, you know, as opposed to other, other agencies. Uh, so, uh, Susanna, um, I'm just remembering testimony that was received in our committee and also what happened in the Senate uh, this morning and hearing testimony from both yourself and also Commissioner Baker, that there's full intentions that if this work is going to be carried out with DOC, that there is a collaboration between DOC and you as well. I mean, you're the only person for the racial equity entity within the administration, correct? So our understanding was that from the get-go, both DOC and you would be working together on uh, carrying forward on this legislation that we put forward, correct? Correct. Correct. So in order for the executive director of the racial equity to approve the plan the DOC would submit under the language the Senate Judiciary put forward. Do you see that as onerous at all? Or do you see that as just the continuation of your collaboration with DOC and vice versa? DOC's collaboration with you? I see it as a continuation of our collaboration. Um, and I I would be a little cheeky in, in the other part of your question and saying, even if it is onerous, it's necessary. This work is not negotiable. And I'm, I'm glad that you as the legislature and DOC um, all agree to that. So yes, I see this as a continuation of existing collaboration with the agency and uh, it's work that needs to happen. And we're just gonna have to find a way to make it work. Questions from the committee. And I don't know if we wanna continue sharing the screen or not. I'll continue if I don't hear anything back. Any questions from for Susanna? Uh, I have a comment or a question, sort of. Sure. Um, I think that this this is good, I, and the prog progress of the work should continue. I just want to make sure that, and I think um, 
Chair Emmons was asking the basic question is, is this hinder you in any way? Because we want to make sure that it supports you and we don't want any legislation that we put in to interrupt the path that's already being followed very well. So if you see this as not hindering you in any way, but and perhaps if it's helping you, that would be even better, then that would be good to know. And I, and I think you've said it's not hindering you. Correct, it's, it's not a hindrance. Okay, good, good. Does it help? I, I see this as a little bit more of a net neutral, perhaps. Um, yeah, I see it as okay. perhaps a net neutral. Good, thanks. Any other questions for Susanna? I don't see anything. Thank you on such short notice. You can stay as long as you can because I'm just going to shift it over to Commissioner Baker. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, good afternoon, folks. For the record, uh, Jim Baker, the Interim Commissioner of Corrections. Um, appreciate the opportunity to come back into the committee to talk about this. Um, look, I want to take us back in a little bit in my testimony before and how we got to working collaboratively to put together the original language. And then I'll make some comments on, on the change of language. Um, you know, the chairwoman and I had a conversation about putting um, down and memorializing um, the commitment from corrections to work on the issue of equity. And we were working on this within weeks of me arriving at corrections in January. And it would, you know, in, uh, in my introduction conversations with you, we talked about things like hiring. And that's even more steeled in my mind now around the issue of equity. And I, I, don't, I don't wanna publicly disagree with Director Davis, but this language is not helpful to me as the Commissioner of Corrections. Um, this is not the first time I've been asked to come into a challenge agency to make changes and make systematic changes. What bothers me about the language is in essence, it wouldn't be the commissioner of corrections making the changes inside the agency. It would be the executive director um, of equity. And, I'm all, and, I, and I believe that director Davis knows this, that I'm committed to this. But if you wanna bring back, I'm gonna go back to what I talked about way back when I first got here. We need to stop making political changes inside corrections if you want them to last. They have to be systematic. Systematic changes mean bringing the bottom of the organization up to the point where they recognize that what you're trying to do is a change in the culture for the betterment of the holistic department. In this case, the folks we supervise, the employees, this is why I thought your language was so important in the findings. It made a very clear statement that the Department of Corrections is going to be a leader in state government on bringing fair, impartial, and equity into their systems. Now, I, if this language went through and it's it's what it is, um, we're going to just like the director said, we're going to continue to work. We made a big commitment already to this. We're making a big commitment on a process around hiring. <clears throat> if you can sense I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because, um, you know, and I, I, and I have to clear up something because when I was in Senate Judiciary um, this morning, <clears throat> Senator Sears asked me if I saw Senator Ash's language. And I said, yes. But I was looking at the Senate Journal, which did not include the change in the language and findings. So I have to be clear and get on the record about that because I don't, I don't want to make it sound like I was being deceitful in Senate Judiciary. What I found important about your language, and I realize if you're going to find a compromise, compromise is about meeting Senate Judiciary part way. What I found about the important piece of your language and the findings is it made a very bold statement about what corrections was committing to. That's been replaced by language, which is language that's fair, fair and accurate, but not what the original intent of our conversation was. And so 
um, there's a certain level of frustration with me um, that it changes completely the statement that I'm making inside corrections that was going to be backed up by this language that appeared in your findings. So um, I know you got to find a compromise. Um, that language leading in um, is not repeating what the statute says about Executive Davis's status is all true. I'm not sure how helpful that's going to be to me about making a statement about what the values of the Department of Corrections are. That's my point. So, um, Representative Edmonds, I'll, I'll leave it there for right now and certainly open it up to the floor for, for, for comments. But I, I want to I emphasize, no matter what happens, no matter where language ends up, um, you know, we're making the systematic changes inside the agency. And I just had this conversation with staff yesterday when asked what's going to happen when you leave. And what I said to them is this, this change is not about me. It's about all of us. And when I say all, all of us, I mean the folks inside corrections. We are positioning ourselves. And I just changed the top level of the table of organization, which I've shared, hope to share if Senator uh, Representative Shaw and Edmonds um, do not have it yet, is really symbolic of the effort that we're making to institutionalize the changes inside corrections. And I, I feel that when, when you get a clear message from the legislature that we can't trust you to do that, so we're gonna give you some oversight to do it. Um, I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier. I understand the history here, but it doesn't help me make the changes culturally inside the organization that need to be made. So um, again, I appreciate you taking time to let me come back and uh, weigh in on these changes. Questions? So I have a thought. But I'm gonna put this out on the table because I know we don't have a lot of time. I think one of the best things to do is accept the language on the approval, plan be approved. That's the key portion for Senate Judiciary, that the plan would be submitted for approval to the executive director. And then that would then accept the language in D, which is the report. I would put out to us that I would ask to have in the intent language that we put back our number three, which is to enhance human services approach to state correctional program that would require DOC to undertake a thorough review and revision of its policies, administrative directives, and interim procedures and memos. That feeds right into what the Commissioner Baker just said. I would want to see that language back. And then in the plan, C2, B, I would want to put back in our language that explains a little bit more of the resources and funding that would be needed to complete the plan. And that would be language including upgraded technology, consultant support, and required data. So that's, that's the easy part. Does the committee, does that make sense to the committee? Could you follow that through? Okay. Um, I, have, I have a hand up. I don't know whether you're. No, I, no, I don't, I'm sorry. Why? What? I have a hand up too. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have the participant thing. Okay, so Car Kurt, Kurt, well, I have Carl first and then Kurt. Yeah, let's let okay. Carl go. <laughs> Carl and Kurt. I, I have, I've just got a real quick question for the commissioner. I just want to be sure that I'm, I'm understanding him uh, correctly. Um, commissioner Baker, I, what I think I'm, I'm hearing you say, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is that um, our language is a bit more holistic about the overall function of corrections and, and the, the environment in which it works. And it also puts the impetus on this work uh, to come from your office. Is that correct? That's 100% correct. Okay. Sir. And, and what I what I get from your objection to the Senate side is that 
it removes that and makes it an external force that is driving the work, which I would assume can run into all sorts of problems around uh, in a command and control organization around trust and around who's really driving the bus. Is that correct? You, you, you nailed it on the head, sir. Right. I just want to be sure that I understand. And, and I, 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 I probably could have been a little clearer. I should have um, used your explanation. All right. Well, I just, I just want to be sure. I just want to be sure I understand. So thank, thank you for clarifying that. And I, and I think I, 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 um, that, that does make the Senate language problematic. And, and uh, so, all right. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you, sir. Uh, Kurt. Um, I just want to make sure of one thing from my understanding of, of what you said, Commissioner. Also. Um, my understanding is that your your problem is with the findings, not with the rest of it so much. Is there any problem with having the executive director being the approval of it? That not at all, not at all. Okay. I'm fine with that. The only piece, again, uh, and and I didn't say this in the beginning, uh, Representative Taylor, um, Representative Emmons picked up on that language around the need for technology and resources is important because yeah. a lot of this work centers around data. And I'm about maxed out right now on being able to use the staff I have, for example, for data. So there, there is an important piece there about that that I forgot to mention in the beginning. Absolutely no problem. In fact, we probably should have thought of this before, but we're working in collaboration with Director Davis now. We have been for a period of time. Okay, good. Thank you. That's why I, I'm doing the easy part first, and then we're going to get to the findings. Okay, Butch, you had your hand up or not? You're muted, you're muted. Okay, I did, thanks. Uh, yeah, the easy part of the language, I'm, I'm, I'm clear on and, and good with you on that. A little concerned that in the intent, we've lost number three and I think you brought that up. You wanna put that back. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm a little concerned that uh, they've shortened up the timelines for the report. Uh, it's from December and January. I'd like to lengthen out those timelines in, in the report from December to January and from January to February. So we not because we have added an extra step into those reports. So I think it's crucial to have a little extra time because I don't think DOC can I want to make sure DOC can get it together by a, by a date certain. And uh, we as a committee probably wouldn't be taking a whole lot of testimony early January uh, on, on this because there are other duties in the first year of the biennium. So instead of having DOC submit the draft plan by December 15th, you would extend that date out. And then uh, upon approval of that plan, but not later than January 15th, it would be presented to the legislature, you would extend that out. Yes, I would. I, I'd rather have the date extended than to get, no offense, Commissioner, than to get a bunch of numbers that don't mean anything. Can we do the end of December and then the end of January? I'm afraid if you get into February, we're pretty already focused on other things come February. That accomplishes that accomplishes the same thing and takes uh, gives yeah. our next couple of weeks. No, no, that's that's a that's better because we leave the we leave December in and January in. Yeah, just extend it out a week and a half. Of course, then you get the holidays after the 15th, but at least, and it's a draft. It's a draft that goes. Does that make sense to the committee? So Becky can pick up a date at the end of December and then a date at the end of January. I don't want hmm? Alice, I've got a question when you're ready. Yep, let me just see if Butch is done and then we'll go to you, Mary. Yeah, I'm Butch? done for you, I guess. Okay, Mary. Uh, Commissioner Baker, were you able to express this morning, being that most of the committee members obviously didn't hear your testimony, 
Were you able to explain the way you have with us your concerns with the language? So did they hear what we just heard from you? I, I, I was not because what happened was um, I got scheduled at the last minute yesterday for Senate Judiciary. I had a commitment at 11 or excuse me, 1030 and they were scheduled for 10. So I went first. I was operating off the Senate calendar from yesterday, saw the language at the end about a report going through Executive Director Davis, which is fine, as I've said. Um, it was after I left the testimony that Senator Ash um, uh, amendment came up um, and, and I had not seen it. So um, I was not able to comment the way I have here. Okay, cause that does concern me. I would hope that they would have, you know, with such a change that they would have reached back out somehow to you to have an understanding with the head of DOC, your commitment to this. And I think we all understand your very strong commitment to doing this work um, and going, going forth in, in the right manner, like you said, from the ground up. Um, is there a way, Alice, that somehow there can be further discussion are they because I mean the, I just would think it would be very important for them to hear what Commissioner Baker had to say but I think the train not, left the station yeah and, and not the not to cut you off Representative Morrissey but I think in fairness the chair chair chairman Sears Senator Sears he asked me the question if I had saw the language change. And I think I think he meant this this language we're talking about now. I was thinking what I read off the Senate calendar. I had not looked at their website and saw those changes. So I had in fact said I didn't have any problem with it. I was referring to the last paragraph. Uh, that, that would concern me that, you know, they've got that impression when Actually, it is a bit, a quite a bit different, but as you said, the train probably has left the station, but I would think we would want to do this and do it right, but far be it from me. Well, I appreciate that, Mary, and that's why I said to Senate Judiciary, we need to bring this language back to our committee here and see if we can find a compromise to offer back to the Senate. And as I've stated, the key piece that the Senate is um, really uh, wants is that the, there's approval from the executive director of the plan. And the commissioner says, yes, that, that piece is fine. So I put out what I would like to see, I don't know where the rest of the committee is on the easy parts that the plan is approved by the executive director. The intent section, we put back our number three, which is enhanced services, human services approach to DOC. And that we put back in the plan, the language that goes to the tech, upgraded technology consultant support and required data. And that we extend the dates out of the draft um, that's submitted to the executive director to the end of December, and that upon approval that it's be submitted to us at the end of January. Are people okay with all of that? Okay, now let's go to the crux of the whole issue, which is the findings, okay? And again, I'm gonna push this along. Knowing I think, and Butch, correct me if I'm wrong, but we were, I was reading the room, Senate Judiciary, and I think we have to leave some of the findings in, but it's how maybe it's done. Uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say in this forum, I'll just say, yes, we need to leave some findings in. Some of them, and I have some thoughts. Okay, so bear, bear with me. Um, so, Maybe when the findings start, we start with a few of our findings first. And 
um, I'm thinking of condensing one and two of our findings where, and I'm just putting this part out for discussion, the state's Department of Corrections is a department within the Agency of Human Services. Um, and, and maybe find a way to just say um, <clears throat> within Title 28 VSA Section 1 and not get into developing and administrating a rehabilitative correctional program designed in part to render the treatment. Take that out and bring up our number two so that it sort of states in that first finding Department of Corrections is a department within the Agency of Human Services outlined in or whatever in 28 VSA section one or 28 VSA. And that the department plays an important role in implementing the quality of, of an individual's sentence and ability for a successful return to and participation in the community. And then I would keep three as it is. So we'd have a new finding one and a finding two. Then I would go in to the third finding. The General Assembly passed to, in 2018 or passed in the 2018 Acts and Resolves, Act 9. And we pick up the language after that. And I'm not sure if we put in all of that language in terms of the remainder of number one, number two, a, B, and C, and number three. And I'm debating on number four in the Senate version to take that out because we've taken care of that in our findings. So that's what I would put out there. So we included their findings, but we take out in their findings, we take out the first sentence in recognition of the moral imperative to identify and co combat systemic race, racial disparities. We've outlined that out within our intent language. Um, so it would start with a fact that the General Assembly passed 2018 Acts and Resolve number nine and explain what it is. And then I'm thinking of just deleting their number four, and then it goes into the intent. So I would put that out for discussion. Butch? Why not? <laughs> I, uh, I too had some time to sit with this, Alice, since this morning, and, and I agree. Uh, number four was extremely problematic for me makes a statement that it makes a one person's opinion a statement and and i i don't care for that but and we hashed that out on our committee extensively about saying things like that and we were careful not to uh and also i think putting back in especially our uh something on our finding number two about talking about corrections is not a law enforcement agency and it does not perform in, in any capacity as a law enforcement agency needs to be said because a member of the Senate committee this morning said, well, we've taken care of all this in S-124. Right. Law enforcement. Yep. And there, there's, there's, it's different between correction mm -hmm. and law enforcement. So yep. yes, thank you for, for bringing that up. So folks, What do you think of the chances that they'll accept what we change? Their priority was that the plan be approved by the executive director. Which is fine with me. But I mean, I we worked so hard on this and to just have it thrown out like bath water, just, but I like the way you have, in, you know, turned it around and in, interpreted some of theirs and put ours back in. So I'm go along with it. Carl? Um, I support uh, what what Butch just said about the um, language that we have in. Um, oh wait a minute, no, no, I've lost it. Hang on. Uh, about the the section in in the findings about how um, I, I mean I think I I really like one and two, and what it what it what about those our findings. Yes, about and what 
yeah. what they do is they is they 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 give a holistic um, uh, definition of the work the corrections does that um, racial equity can't help but fit into, mm -hmm. and um, and I don't know if they would if the Senate would buy that or not, but I and I think that that really reflects our our um, that really reflects our sort of deep understanding of these issues here. Um, but I, I'd, I'd love to see it stay in there if there's a way that we can make that fly. And maybe there isn't, I don't, I'm not, I'm gonna leave that up to the chair and the vice chair to decide what's what we can get and what we can't get here. But um, I think it would be good to see both of those pieces back in there. So I know that Becky has a draft. She just has been working up the draft based on our discussions here. So uh, Kurt has a question and then we'll go to the draft. Um, I'm not so much a question, just a comment. I'm, I'm also in favor of, of what you've suggested and especially as Butch pointed out, getting rid of four. Okay, can you put this up on the screen, Becky? And maybe email it out to folks at the same time, or maybe, I don't know how we can do this. That would be good if you could email it out, please. So uh, let's give Becky time to also email it out. Yeah, I, I'm gonna um, get off this. I think I have to get off the screen share b before, uh, so that I can email it out. So I'll, I'll take it off for a second. Oh, this is a legislative session that keeps giving and giving and giving. <laughs> we say goodbye to each other. I don't know how many times. And then, then you get an email from me. We're meeting. I think Terry was hoping he was going to be in like Bermuda or the Bahamas or someplace like that by now. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh God, I just. I wish there was some way to combine their number one with our number one and two. I'm trying to figure out if there is a way to say that they, we have the executive director and we have the department under human services. They're not, but, the executive director is not under the agency. No, I mean uh, the department of corrections under human services. Kind of combine those together somehow, but it doesn't work. Right, it doesn't. I think I think the executive director of racial equity has to stand on its own for the yeah. Senate. For the Senate, that's an important. I agree with you there. I think they want to make sure that that's in there. Yeah, hmm. and on its own. Hmm. So Becky, you sent it out by email? Um, yeah, I just sent okay. it out. Okay. So let's wait. Okay, I just got it. So. I think I, I, I'm not sure if I got all the findings because a few different things were said, but well, um, yeah, well. but we can work through it. Um, so if you're ready, I can show you what I changed. Yep, I am ready. I'm assuming others are ready too. So why don't you start walking us through? So um, in the findings section in subdivision one, I took out that first clause and that now state starts as the General Assembly passed uh, Act 9 in 2018, which created the position of the Executive Director of Racial Equity. Okay. What I proposed is we started out with our findings. Okay. First, but this is a third finding. The third finding. Okay. So let me just do a quick change of that. Okay. 
this draft doesn't include our findings at all, Becky, that I have on the email. Yeah, I just, I just, I wasn't sure if that was agreed upon or not. I, I just didn't hear okay. that part. So I just put in on this part, the draft that's on the screen. Now I just put in the first two findings. Is that, is that what well, you all have? Yeah, what I was thinking was trying so that it doesn't look so long for the Senate. I was trying to combine one and two, our one and two finding, so that it would read something to the effect of the State's Department of Corrections is the department within the Agency of Human Services with a stated purpose in 28 BSA, maybe section one. And I was thinking of trying to get rid of what's on line 13 through 16, not go into that but replace that with um, number two. The DOC does not serve in a law enforcement capacity, but does play an important role in implementing the quality. I'm just trying to combine one and two and not go into the details in thir lines 13 and six through 16. Just reference the statute where DOC is a department within the Agency of Human Services with the stated purpose outlined in 28 BSA, whatever. It's not worth it. So I, I've just changed it to the state's Department of Corrections is a department within the Agency of Human Services with the stated purpose in 28 BSA section one of developing and administering during a rehabilitative correctional program and plays an important role in implementing the quality of an individual sentence and ability for a successful return to and participation in the community. Can that screen be made a little larger at all on anybody? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I can do it here. Hang on. And, and then, okay, yeah, let's not look at number two, okay? Let's not look at number two yet. What about number one? Does that make sense to folks? And I can't see you all. So Becky, the new number two would be our old number three. The department's role is also is to also provide security and ensure racial and social equity to employees and to persons under the custody of the commissioner. That would be number two, and would be our old three. Two old three, okay. So we've combined our first and second finding into number one, and we've kept our third finding into number two. And then the new third finding picks up what the Senate has said, and we've eliminated that first introductory part, and it says a fact that the General Assembly passed 2018 Acts and Resolve number nine. And then it picks up the rest of what the Senate did, but it eliminates their number four, which their number four said, in light of the historical racial disparities in criminal justice system, the General Assembly finds systemic racism and bias that the Department of Corrections should be prioritized by review, by for review by the executive director of racial equity. I think we're saying by the bill itself, it's prioritizing it because that's what the Senate said. Mm -hmm. Senator White said doing this bill means it's prioritized, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's what Commissioner Baker said that he already has been working with her. So it doesn't have to be prioritized because they're already working together.
in, so, in that? Yep, yeah, Kurt. I hate, I hate to bring up a nit, but in that line seven of uh, finding number one, can we change implementing to determining? We're not really implementing the quality, we're determining the quality. Well, that was a quote from Heather Simons. Yeah, well, I think she used the word wrong. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, that was the quote that we used. How I don't... do you implement the quality? How do you implement quality? Sure. Oh, well, okay. Your supervision. You, all right. I'm not going to, uh, it's not worth arguing about. <laughs> what? Are, are we giving up on the statement that DOC is not uh, a law enforcement? Oh, law enforcement? Yeah. That's fine. No, I don't think we did give up on that. That was an oversight. It wasn't included. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we should give up on it. Right. We got to put that in. So that's got to. Can we, can we, uh, yeah, probably can put it in number two, maybe. Might fit. short statement. You know. I think it's important to reaffirm that because of perception. Um, so I changed number two to the department does not serve in a law enforcement capacity and its role is to provide security and ensure racial and social equity to employees and to persons under the custody of the commissioner. I'm not sure if it fits there or not. Four. Equity. Are people comfortable with two? Anybody not comfortable say no, I'm not comfortable? Because I can't see everybody. Uh, I'm, no. Uh, well, it's okay. It's okay? Is everyone okay with it? Okay, how about number three, four? How about number three, four, and five? The rest of their findings, and it's a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, now we go into our intent language, Becky, and that's where we've picked up our number three. Sorry, I'm on mute. Um, in new finding five, um, just oh, okay. I I thought this was an issue before, but um, just pointing it out. I don't know if it's worth changing, but on this line uh, nine to ten, it says um, gather relevant data and records necessary to carry out the purpose of this chapter. What chapter um, are you talking about? So it's it's a direct quote from statute, and I just I don't think it's um... this 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 reminds me so much of conference committees with the Capitol bill with Vince writing language as we go along. <laughs> you mean cousin Vinny? Yeah, this, this this reminds me of this. Um, yeah, it's referring to a chapter, and we don't know what chapter. Um, I mean, I can put in the actual chapter. Um, it's I, I can look it up. It's three VSA. Um, but I just as as written, it it doesn't make sense because it's an internal reference in the chapter. Right. So it might be. It, I would reference. I'd put in the chapter, the number. The actual reference to the chapter. So it's three VSA chapter 68. 
So before we leave the findings, we have Commissioner Baker and Heather Simons with us. Um, I'm just going to ask you if you're comfortable to weigh in on this or not. Hope it makes sense. If it helps. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I appreciate your effort to make the changes that, again, I'll, I'll just go back to, you know, what has been said. It's about, I, I thought your language made a bold statement um, that was helpful to us. And I think you're doing your absolute level best to get some of that back in there to see if Senate Judiciary will um, will compromise with. Mm -hmm. I, 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 don't know, I don't want to be speaking for Heather, but you know, because we haven't had a chance to talk. But um, I appreciate the effort you're making here. Heather, do you want to weigh in? <clears throat> I mean, my thinking is we've put our findings first, and then the the statement of fact about. Um, the act number nine that was passed in 2018. So Heather, do you wanna weigh in at all? You don't have to. Thank you, I concur with the commissioner. Um, if there's an, some clarity around determining the quality of the sentence, I think when, I, when, I, when we talk about that, the fact is we do determine the quality of someone's sentence, we know that, and we wanna improve upon that. So language I sh um, should have used if I didn't would be that we have the opportunity to determine. So would, and this is what Kurt was saying, uh, an important role in determining the quality? Yes. Of an individual's statement, I mean sentence. And make that change? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are we thinking, missing? Are um, we missing the statement that we talked about as far as the uh, statistics part of it? Um, we talked about adding that back in. The data. The, the data needed. That's under the plan um, intent. We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, okay. Gary, we're only looking at the findings. So we've added back some our findings condensed, particularly number one. Um, and then we put a statement of fact in terms of the establishment of the uh, within the executive branch, the position of executive director of racial equity. And we've laid out what the role is of the executive director in statute. Um, and that is also the executive director is also responsible for working collaborati collaboratively with state agencies and departments to gather relevant existing data and records necessary to carry out the purpose of 3VSA chapter 68 and to develop best practices for remediating systemic racial disparities throughout state government. And then we go into our intent statement. And what we've asked here that's highlighted is to put back number three that the Senate had taken out. And then Becky, if you can scroll to the plan. Um, we did agree to lines 22 and 23 that the Commissioner of Corrections would submit for approval to the executive director of racial equity a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism and bias and promote diversity and inclusion in DOC. And that plan would uh, go out with the scope of the plan, which was our language. Number two, what the plan in the timeline and process, that was our language. A was our language and B, was um, they had included, let me get into my right draft here. I got it right here. Where's that? I can't find it. Oh, they, they had 
in B, they only had identifying the resources and funding needed, if any, to complete the plan. In our language, after that had including upgraded technology, consultant support and required data. So that was your concern, Terry, right? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so we'll put that back in. And then on the report, Butch was concerned that the commissioner is submitting the draft plan to the executive director of racial equity for review and approval was a little too soon, the middle of December. So we extended that to December 31st. And then once it's approved and no later than January 31st, it would be presented to us. So questions, thoughts? Are we ready to say that we, I know all of this has to go to editing, but I would, are we okay with at least getting this language to Senator Sears? Yes. I like oh, yeah. that. It's a lot better than what we have, than what they had before. Commissioner Baker and Heather, is that all right with you? Does this pass muster with you folks? It's good. It's good, Madam Chair. Thank you for, for all of you for your work. Appreciate it. Agreed. Thank you. Just trying to think how the best way to do this is. So Butch and Becky, help me out here. Um, just got a text from Sarah. She didn't realize we were doing this. Um, let me just do a show of hands, particularly, why don't you do, well, not everybody can do their blue hands or can everybody do their blue hands that you support this language? Just raise your blue hands if you can do it. Just so I can see. I'm, I'm raising mine now. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mary. Star six, right? Uh, no, star nine. Oh, it's star nine? I thought star nine. Star six, star six mute. Okay. <laughs> unmute, right? Star or six on, is It mutes or unmutes? Okay. Are you trying to tell me that, Alice, are you trying to tell me to shut up again? No, I'm not. I'm only, I'm only, I'm I only kidding. Them. I can never can figure out which one is which, the nine and the six. So we got one, two. Oh, I should raise my hand too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mary, you're working on it, right? <clears throat> yep. You you you've got me. I'm a yes. Okay, you're a yes. I got it. So we got eight zero three. Okay. Everybody can lower their hands. I'm not like Bill McGill, like Laura them all. <laughs> have to do who are we, Alice? Who are we? Sarah missing? Coffey, Sarah Coffey, and Linda Joy, and Jill. Okay. So Butch and Becky, help me out here. What's the best way to do this? Just um, maybe I should get a copy of this even before it goes to editing and email it to Dick and say, this is what we worked on and proposed. Yeah, I can send you a copy now. Okay. Uh, that's probably the best route, Alice. And, and we all know full well, if, if we, if he doesn't accept it, the bill's probably dead. And give him an opportunity to give me some feedback in case we have to reconvene. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a great idea, and we're running out of hours because I know we're at two now, so we're on the floor at three. Yeah, but we can always get off the floor if we have to real fast. Yeah. I'm not sure what's on the floor today, so I don't think anybody is till she bangs the gavel. <laughs> All uh, I know, it's going to be a long day tomorrow. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a really long day tomorrow. Um, Madam I mean, Chair, I need, I need to leave, so I, yeah. I want to thank, 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 every, thank, thank everybody you. for the work. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. and Heather, if you need to leave too, that's fine. I'm just kind of logistically trying to figure out to do this while we're still in Zoom. And if, he hear, if I hear anything back, or probably the best thing to do is send it to him and then just keep you folks posted. I'm wondering if you can do a... Uh, 
if they're not substance changes that that they won't agree with i mean if it's you know the, like the dates or something like along that line we, we can just have you give us a quick email or text and say this is what uh this is what he's looking at uh, are you okay with it or something along those lines yeah if it's, it, it's going to be a tussle in the findings i'm sure of that uh, well you know yes and no i mean their priority was the approval yeah. No, you're right. But I, I, I'm just thinking of the author. But he's not on the committee. I know. But we've kept the findings. It's mm -hmm. just, we said, yeah, the statement here is for DOC, and then we're bringing it into yeah. um, what's in statute for the racial, the executive director of racial equity. Sure. I think I have to go to another meeting now um but i've sent it to editing and i've sent it to you um so just keep me posted on if you need anything else i think if they Can are I going continue? to make changes on the floor tomorrow it just has to be um sent to secretary bloomer by um like 10 30 so tomorrow morning yeah okay well i will keep my fingers crossed and everything else <laughs> And Becky, send, you're amazing. Yeah, and I'll send it you're just, all amazing. Thank no. you. <laughs> That's okay. what we meet again until January. That's what we get reelected, the ones who are running for election, Terry. And, uh, well, I did feel a little bad putting those dates in that bill of like, you have until New Year's to do that. Yes, really, I know. I know. That's why I said I'll let Becky figure it out. <laughs> So thank you, Becky. Hey, thanks. Bye. Yeah, and Sarah, you came on board. Sorry, this was so quick. Language has got changed in S20. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry, it's rare that I have my eyes off my phone. I had a constituent issue and I was with my mother, so I apologize. Um, fine. That's fine. So we're gonna. I'll submit this to Senator Sears. Keep my fingers crossed and keep you hooked up. And Sarah. Do you have that language in front of you at all by any chance? It's really, they they were really looking at changing our whole findings completely. Yeah, it's, I have the, it looks like it was written by Becky at 11.37 this morning, is that? Yeah, we've redone it. Okay. So I forgot, well, has Becky emailed this out to everybody, the language, I hope? No, just me, right? Oh, no, she, she did. She, she was going to send it to you and Butch. Okay. So I'm going to send it to... I have this, I have something that was sent at 124 that Becky sent to the committee. No. Oh, no, Is there's it, one after the work. <laughs> okay. Five. Okay. Um, do you have it, Phil? No, I do not. Let me... Let me it's going to be easier if... If I email it to you and then you email it out to the committee, I know that doesn't make sense, but it, it's going to be that easier. Does. It's going to be easier. Okay, so I'm going to spend some time phrasing my statement to Senator Sears. I want to make sure I can capture it. Again, I want to thank everybody. I'm sorry again to send out an email to say we're meeting. And I, again, want to thank Phil. We wouldn't be able to do it without you and without our IT team and legislative council. I just don't know how we would have done it. So hopefully, hopefully the Senate accepts this and then we can move on. Um, I know that they're working on Woodside language in the conference committee in appropriation. <laughs> and um, we wanna make sure that BGS can continue working through the winter to at least get to a point of documents that um, can bring them forward. And I haven't heard anything from Senate institutions where they fall in on this, but um, Conference Committee and Approps is working on it. So, Kurt? Uh, just a quick question. Do you know how we can um, see the Conference Committee on its appropriations, either you or Phil? 
you can go to you can go to House Appropriations Committee webpage in life. That's where it is. Yep. Okay. Live stream for that. And um, so that language that we submitted to our House conferees is being discussed. And um, Mary is the key person that's working on that for the conference committee. The Senate conferees are Senator Kitchell, Senator Westman, and Senator Ash. And our conferees are Representative Toll, Representative Hooper, and Representative Fagan. So, and then they're also Woodside, they're also working on the space study, on how we get back into Montpelier. What am I missing? It seems like I'm missing something, but I can't remember what I'm missing. That's it, isn't it? Body cameras for the Capitol Police. That was the other thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And GovOps is working on that one. I said, we didn't, we haven't taken any testimony or worked on that. That's a really GovOps issue. So if there isn't anything else, Phil, I hope this will be our last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good at responding to my emails. We need to meet. Yeah, it's gonna stop. <laughs> okay, if we don't have anything else, then we'll finish up our uh, YouTube and wanna thank people for listening in. <laughs>